Now, I must remember that uh, in 48, a church 11 miles east of uh, Selma called me Everdale, Everdale Baptist Church. In October that same year, a church four miles west of Selma, Mount Zion, Potters, called Potters Station. And I had problems. I learned I was going to have problems in the church as well as out. Um, the church, Everdale had built a church uh, the year I was born, 22. And I learned that they were in debt $6,000 and didn't call for $1,500 to build a church way back then. <laughs> and you know, you learn things. And I got them to raise a little bit of money, maybe. So I took a first time I raised $150. And uh, they took it down to this old white man who was everybody in the area traded with him. He's very old. His son was older than I was. And so I said to him, I forget his name. I said, uh, we brought you $150. He said, he said, you the little preacher out there at that damn church? I said, yes, sir. And I had one of the deacons with me. He was so embarrassed. They, they don't. I said, well, we thought we would come down and work. He said, them niggas ain't going to do nothing. He said, they've been come doing this every time, pay a little bit, they're going to do. He said, but uh, I just might have put hay in the, in the so-and-so building. I said, well, I wasn't out there. He said, no, but other folks said, the other preachers said the same thing. He said, but you don't look like no preacher to me. I <laughs> <laughs> white folks were talking, you know. I said, well, I am the minister out there, and I, we want to pay it. So I said, if you could just give us a receipt. See, I told them they had to start having a receipt for this. He, he said, go bring my book, son, whatever his son's name was. He had a great big book, about this big. i never seen a led to that big since. And he turned to Bethel, I mean, uh, Everdale, and he said, he said, well, hell, all this just interest. He said, i tell you what, preacher. He said, you, you got $150. He said, I'm going to give you... I'm going to knock the whole thing back to $4,500. $1,500. I could have hugged that white man. And he, I said, you give me a receipt for that? So we did. And so we began to... Do, but the problem was they were calling preachers every year. Some of the best Baptist preachers been in. Some, one man had passed the church five, five times. And so in the time they elected me... Um, and you know, it's a strange thing. I didn't have anybody to coach me and to tell me but I always believed in what I believed. So that when they were calling me there, uh, I was telling them, okay, we want to get ready, blah, 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 do this and do that. He said, well, you better hear this record. I said, okay, Mr. Secretary, read it. He said, every day about this, every day about this church called Reverend F.L. Shuttle for the year 1948-49. I said, read that again. He said, every day about, I said, well, you still don't have no pastor. He said, no, we called you. I said, no, you didn't call me for no year. I said, the Holy Spirit don't call preachers a year. I said, you call them and you dismiss them. That's why you're handsome. That's why you're old. It's on the church. I said, so you don't have a pastor, and it's up to you where you want it. I said, no, I don't need a church. I'm in school. And, uh, well, we want you. I said, you sure you want me? I said, well, then you have to change that make that, uh, what you call it, permanent. Indefinite, uh -huh. indefinite call. I said, and I'm not asking you to do that because I don't need to do that. I said, if you've all been doing this, I'm fairly certain that this time next year you'll feel like the same. I won't be arguing with you about that. And, of course, uh, they made the change. And, of course, uh, I stayed there from, uh, what was 48 to 50 when I went into first, first Baptist. I, I say not sometimes first Baptist. <laughs> and here I learned exactly what Christ faced with the Pharisees and Sadducees, but he was getting me ready for burning him. Mm -hmm. See? Okay. At the same time, the teachers were, many of the teachers didn't have degree, they had C certificates. Well, I had these rural churches, and I had thought that if I start taking uh, lessons at Alabama State, 50 miles away in Montgomery, I would uh, 
could have a C certificate and I had these two churches and that was about my level, you know. And of course, uh, then I helped to drive the teachers to school. So I started going to school in Montgomery. And I had made nothing under an A in Selma University. And Mr. Brook, the register, said, we have to knock you back to a C. I don't think you can maintain it. I said, well, I have children. I'm not playing. I've come. He said, well, you think you can make A's in Alabama State? I said, I think I could. And he commended me the first quarter. I had made four A's and two B's as average. And and, and I kept that average up. I got, I went on, I went on, and finally, I moved out of this house that the president had built for me at Selma University and moved to Montgomery. That's where our fourth child was born. See, one child was born, two children were born in Birmingham. The third one was born in Mobile. I would have going to Selma University in 46, except that I didn't believe in leaving my wife and she's pregnant. Mm -hmm. So I went to 47. And of course the way is just open for me. Now, in, 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 in Alabama State, then we moved, I just moved to Alabama State. I moved uh, not to the state, I moved to a house on the riverbank. You had to cross the water when it fly. I, I've had time in my life, but I've persevered. Our, our fourth child was born there. And uh, so I'm going, and then I went back to Selma University and got the A.B. And in 1952, uh, I got the B.S. in Alabama State, and I had done 16 hours on the master. That's how I got my marks with all A's. And but I was getting ready. Now, some of the things that, that the deacon would do at First Baptist, and remember, they, the youngest one there was old enough for my grandfather, so you can imagine the problem. And I don't even know where you want me to talk about it, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, I do want you to talk about well, it, because uh, you, as, as you pointed out, this is part of your, the preparation. Yeah, well, let's say it like this. Uh, Pritchett, the, the one who did the printing, was a, was a nice person, fine-looking gentleman. Pritchett could uh, sing like an angel and curse like a sailor. And he, he and Ben Harris, Deacon, and Deacon were trustees. Everybody was everything. That's the kind of stuff I went there with. And they would just do things, two, three of them, and the church had no authority at all. Well, I always thought that in the church, especially you ought to do right, you know. And he was just a friend of mine. And, and naturally, being a, a young man with a family, he would co-sign notes for me at the bank. Never over $100, but I always, I always practiced paying my bills off the full time. I've never paid a bill exactly on time. I paid I mean, paid the entire debt off before time. So, uh, and he would, he got call, he called me FL, and I'd call him JD, you know. And as I began, when I, there was another preacher there when I was visiting, you know, Grimmett, Dr. Grimmett. And he was involved with some lady there, and, and I got, I, I was, Sitting in the church one morning when he was, I never believe in preachers fussing in the pulpit. I think you ought to say what you're going to say. And, and he was, uh, now if anybody here knows me, come up in my face like a man or woman, tell me. And I thought that was very inappropriate. And, uh, and finally he left the church. He left in October, see. Now I had these rural churches. This is how the Lord helped me. And so they, Ben Harris, who was the only black plumber in Selma, he had, his veins were just like ropes around his head. Real. He's a, he was up this way up in the 70s then. And uh, so they called me out to church one Sunday morning and said, now we, we want you to, we want you to, uh, 
set your services back and preach for us. Because people kind of like me. Whenever they knew I was going to preach, they'd be there, you know. That's one of those things. And he said, and we'll give you $10. Then asked ask me what I'll take. Well, $10 to me at that time was like 200 now. And so I said, my church, but churches agreed to it. And they didn't do much shouting in that church. Uh, and there were times I would leave, go down, get my little grip, I think one of them sitting around there somewhere, and leave. And I'd have to go 1 o'clock be my church. They'd be shouting and leaving. So this preacher left the church. And I I had to be that presado when other, they tried to get other preachers to come in. They'd come in and did all right. But in May of 50, the church unanimously called me. I had been preaching. And so I became pastor for his Baptist. Now you get these attitudes. I'm trying to tell you that's what people don't understand. Preacher had, <coughs> Preacher had my best friend who pastored another Baptist church named St. Paul, not far from where I was at Mount Zion. He said, Stuart going and tell F.L. He, he First Baptist. No, he said to me himself this part. He said, now, show Fred, F.L. said, you know, you First Baptist pastor. You don't have food these little niggas no more. I said, J.D., the Lord must have loved little niggas. He made more of them than he did others. It's simple. And so they were want to control. So I, I'm living on a hardwood floor. Now, Ben Harris had put the hardwood floors in the parking, had built the parking, he was a good, put the plumbing and the gas in without estimates, see? And, uh, and, it, and, and uh, you'd hear people say, yeah, them niggas stole money and all this kind of stuff. Well, so when they called me, I said, well, uh, we'll start, blah, blah, blah. And I went to the convention in September, and those three men, Dr. Brown and a druggist at a drug pharmacy, Pritchard and Ben Harris, those three would do everything. And the state, the, the city had uh, condemned a lot part of the church property. And they didn't think the church ought to vote on it. So they just, so when I got back in the convention, he said, well, FL, uh, he said, they're going to take that property. We can't do nothing about no house. So me and Brown, Ben, that's told him, go ahead and take it. I said, but you can't do that. That's trash property. He said, they have to vote on it. He said, why they got to vote on it? Yeah. And it was just things like that, you know. I, and clearly, this was something that went on for some oh, time. They, These they, kinds had of some, they had some of the knockout preachers come there. I mean, big preachers. And all of them had left. Some preachers quit preaching after they left Faith Baptist. But you, you, and I, and I read uh, um, an interview that you had done where you talked about this period. You were so worried and so concerned. It it developed into that because I was trying to be straight. And I think many people who really want to go right and running that kind of stuff don't face it. But you see, belief and trust in God is what. Your anchor. You don't, you don't have any other anchor. Education is not an anchor. It's a benefit. But I just believe this, and I believe God sent me there. So I said, well, I'm going to do right. I'm going to respect that integrity. And, of course, uh, we had to put uh, a roof on the church. But we got ready to put plumbing in this building. And they had these outside toilets where you pull a string when you run out. And women and men had to run out almost with the clothes. I said, this is impossible. And so they agreed that we need to do it. But you walk, in First Baptist, you walk up, up some almost as high as that door and go down in the church seat. Mm -hmm. You walk up, if you've ever seen the church, you walk up steps and you go down into the beautiful building. I said, we'll put, it, we'll put it back under there, and that's where they are today. Well, they said, well, let Ben put the plumbing in. I said, well, I, I think he ought to get it, even if uh, if it costs more, but we ought to get estimates. And that, 
And they just thought I was the worst crook in the world to make them get estimates. Yeah, but this, all of these experiences and, and these confrontations that you had in doing right helped prepare you for, oh, yeah. for oh, yeah. the activism and leading yes, yes. the fight against uh, segregation. Yeah, we're near, we near about there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it so happened that the, 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 the assistant superintendent would belong to First Baptist. And I, they thought I was making 180, and so she gave me a job costing, making 250 dollars teaching, and they just, oh, that was just like, the God had forsaken her. And so they, printed was always, yeah, people saying by part-time preacher, full-time pay, and I, I said, well, I had a point in the committee yet on that, on this kind. I don't need to say all this, but he. They kept on until they got up to where they were going to actually confront me that I had to do. But at the same time, the women had begun seeing what they were doing and were organizing. See, they were, they were, and, and they didn't mind spending money on this and that. But to a woman named Noah Bennett, uh, raised the money to go to Birmingham. And told me, said, well, I'm not going to turn in because they, they don't, they don't do anything. Blah blah blah. I said, well, you better turn it in. I said, I, I'm, I don't want no trouble. She said, well, you got it. I said, you better let us support you. You at least you're trying to do right. Say, hey, all the preachers we've had, two, three men to run them away from this church. I said, well, let me pray over it. I said, at now, if I have a problem, I have to think about. It. And I knew all in my heart all the time that I was not going to agree with them. But I didn't want to incite one person against the other. And uh, finally, I had to just, when we had a board meeting, I'm sitting in a chair like a kid, and they go do what they want to do. For instance, that pretty big brick part that was near by an acre, and they wouldn't cut the grass. When me cut, I said, well, uh, no. Uh, he said, well, we didn't promise to cut the grass. I said, I don't, you didn't have to promise. I just want you to cut it. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, uh, on I said, I'll tell you what, I just had to take a collection. Well, they didn't want that first Baptist take a collection to cut grass. So, I said, so this Dr. Brown said, well, we'll cut it this time. I said, no, don't cut it this time. Just cut it. You know, I was always straight with him. And so finally, it came to where this business of teaching was so infectious to them. So one of the first persons who had been the nicest person on the board, um, we had the last board, the board meeting I had, he just, they had him come out and he said some curse words in the board meeting. I said, well, now the church has to speak on this. He said, well, you ain't going to bring this to the church. Put it. I said, you aren't telling me I can't bring what I want to the church. And then in that meeting, Lawrence Dantless said to me, are you going to quit teaching or else? I said, you just gave me my answer. And Dr. Brown said, what is it? I said, I'll take the else, whatever it is. Well, what does that mean? I said, it means that. I'm going to sit in the boat with God, and we're going to sail down the river and see if you all can sink it. And if God is weak enough to let his boat be sunk, I'll sink with him. Because you're not right, and I'm not going to. And of course, um, the, the, the finale to that was the, 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 the same day that Carl Erskine struck out 15 Yankees in the World Series. I was sitting in Birmingham, uh, in, the Mo, in Montgomery, I'm sorry. On the side of my car, I'm running boat, writing out my recommendation. I had a meeting, and the church agreed with me. Then they all resigned. Now this is this is I've been through the mill. They all resigned. Preacher said, "Well, y'all y'all gonna go in and get get his money." Blah 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 blah. I said, "Well, if I had wanted you to resign, it'd have been the first thing I'd ask." But uh, so then they all quit. That Sunday morning, though, I just simply pointed some more and. Had to take the vote of men and went right on. But my heart was not to stay there and fight. I guess if I 
had been like I am now, I would stay there and seen the bitter end, whatever it was. Then, at the end of 52, I just left. I didn't even tell them. And the man who wrote that book talked to uh, somebody who wasn't even in the church. <laughs> That's one thing you got to straighten out. Uh, we never had a vote. And when I preached that, the lady just told me, said, well, we're going to straighten that out. I said, well, we'll, we'll deal with it. But I, I'm getting ready for Birmingham. Now, in, if you go through all of that, and so I come to this part where you say I was got to where I couldn't sleep. There were times I would bring my two small churches, one, one Sunday I preached five times. That's ridiculous. Two times that morning, one in the afternoon, and one in the mid-afternoon, and then another one at night. And I was just wearing myself down. I was still in school, you know, going to school 50 miles. And, and uh, as the Lord would have it, I was coming, I had, I had to go to a Presbyterian, Presbyterian minister about 35 miles away, he wanted me to come in. And so I could relax during the day. And while I was there, I guess, I, I, I sort of reaffirmed my faith, and I said to the Lord, uh, just help me to go. But it was on the train where I really found out that God answers prayer. And and I went back and told Pritchard, but I, was, I was walking by the sidewalk, and he's in there. Some said to me, he said, go ahead and tell him that he isn't God. So he hadn't spoken to me in over a month. So I went by and said, J.D., yeah. I said, I want to come out and tell you something. I said, I've, I've observed you're the kind of man that can curse when you want to. And he had quit his wife, married another woman in the choir, and then went back to her. <laughs> he would do a lot of things. I said, you do anything you want to do and think you can get by with it. I said, but I'm going to tell you this. What I think God wants me to say and do, I'll do. And... I don't need you to speak for me. I said, besides, my answer to you on anything that you disagree with, with me is go to hell. And walked out. He left his head his mouth away. I think it's the first time anybody got to him. <laughs> well, I knew I was getting ready to leave the church. It wasn't a problem of that. But God was getting me ready inside for that fighting thing, that thing that I would need to face the clan without shrugging. And let truth be my defense. Let the word be my. Was there a particular thing that that an incident or whatever that that pulled you into that kind of fight? No, no, it was no, it was no terrific incident. All segregation. 